Hello and welcome to another video where we're going to investigate some old networkish gear and see if we can reuse it for something uh, interesting. So I had a Palo Alto 5500, which is an older Palo Alto chassis uh, that was out of warranty and it had the hard drives removed and erased. There was no software. And so I was curious if I took it apart, was there anything in there that could be useful? Maybe there was a system in there that we could uh, install Linux on or maybe make use of the network interfaces. And so I cracked it open and it ended up being sort of a two layer system. There were two PCBs in there, one large one and then one small one. And so I thought we'd take a look at them and see if we could do something with them. So we'll start with this PCB here, which is, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, which was on the bottom of the chassis. And when I pulled this out, I noticed the label here. It says MB8874. I recognize that label. I mean, the format of the label, only because I have another board here that came out of a, a, a Viata a Viata sold network um, router, and the label is the same kind of format. And this board, I was able to find a, a service manual for, and it was made by uh, Lanner, which is a UK company, and they make system boards designed for OEM integrators who want to build a network appliance of some kind, and they have a bunch of different boards, and they've had historically a bunch of different designs for embedding in a case, the kind of thing you'd expect. And so this board is definitely uh, one of those made by them. The particular model number, though, I wasn't able to find any service manuals for it or, or PDFs about the board. Um, but some things are sort of obvious. You know, it has a CPU here, which is a Xeon CPU. I think it's an LGA 1150X. Uh, socket. There's a chipset here, um, some other PC related things. There's two SATA ports here. There's a PCI Express uh, mail output here on the side. And this other board that I had, it had the same thing. And there was a little adapter that was like female to female. So you could have a PCI card on top of the board. Um, and so I have that adapter we could try. Um, you know, it's got fan outputs here, normal memory slots. Um, some other sort of PC related things over here, obviously a CMOS battery, a little jumper for clearing CMOS. Uh, it has two network ports on it, plus two USB, and then a console port that's a serial port connected to uh, COM1, and that's labeled on the board. Um, a couple of headers for SPI, I suspect for uh, an SPI bus to connect to other things, to instrument other things. Um, the power input to the board is this single connector here, which is uh, a normal ATX power input that you'd have like for a video card. So it's 12 volt and just grounds in 12 volt. Um, so all the regulation is done on the board. Uh, and so, yeah, so this is definitely something that we could likely make use with. I did use the power supply to power the board on. And on the serial port, I was able to get uh, effectively the console output, it had BIOS redirection turned on. I wasn't able to get into the BIOS, there was no key mentioned, and I tried all the combinations I could think of, but there may be some way to figure out what the right combination is for that. Um, and then I put in a free DOS USB, and it did boot into it. It hung pretty quick because the CPU got really, really hot. This board is designed to have a significant amount of airflow, especially with this heat sink. There's no air movement on here at all. And in the actual case, it's got a gigantic bank of fans that really pushes the air past it. So it's not surprising that for this to be usable, you'd have to um, figure out some way to get some airflow across it. But it definitely is a PC chassis. The other kind of unusual thing is this output over here is a SAS bus. So it's a wide SAS bus interface, and this is a SAS controller. Um, and likely this board was made, you know, you could use it for a, a, a system that has a disk array or a SAS backplane, as an example. Um, and this was on the lower part of the board. And then the uh, upper board, which I'll bring over here. And so this is the upper board, and it's a big honking board, uh, very thick, probably eight layer, I would guess. Um, obviously a very, very custom board uh, with some pretty dense ball grid array components on it. So let's take kind of a look at this system here. I'll zoom out a little bit there. And you know, on here you see there are these Octeon Plus chips, which are, is a, a MIPS-based microcontroller or microprocessor. 
um, with its own dedicated memory. And these are used a lot in network appliances. Um, there are a lot of good libraries for doing IP-based things in MIPS, and so a, a lot of devices have these in them. And there's another one over here that is another MIPS processor. This one has a lot of flash memory, so I suspect this was something that boots up and maybe d does a lot of bootstrapping. There's a Broadcom chip here um, that does network connectivity or network mapping. Um, there's a, let's see, a Vertex 6 FPGA. There are two of them. And so those FPGAs obviously have a lot of custom logic in them. There's a little NetLogic chip that's kind of a neat chip. It's like a chip designed to do, to look up the next route point in a route list. Uh, so you can give it IPs and net masks and it will look through a very large table. Um, and it's like super fast. Like it can search through, you know, uh, half a million entries in you know, microseconds. Um, so it's really designed for the use case of having a network device that needs to route a lot of traffic to different endpoints. Um, and it really requires you to have an FPGA in support of it. So this design kind of makes sense. Um, there's a Marvel chipset over here, uh, which is uh, a somewhat standard Marvel uh, Ethernet chipset. So this op operates this little Ethernet switch here. Uh, there's a little CPLD here as well. Um, and then we have the SFP Plus ports here. And these are two SFP Plus interface. And these connect directly into these Octeon um, MIPS machines, basically. And each one has their own uh, DRAM sockets. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a very custom board. The power coming in is an ATX connector here, and that is a standard ATX power connector. Um, there's another one over here that's an output to the fans. It's just a combination of power, ground, and, and the tachometer readings. Um, and then there also is this SAS input here. And so what is interesting is that the interface from this board to the sort of PC that controls it is over a SAS interface. And there's nothing, I mean, it, it's a, it's an interface that was probably available on the original board, um, the, the, the controller board, and you know, SAS itself is in some ways similar to Ethernet in that it's a switch network. You can have multiple nodes on it and send packets. Uh, it's very low latency, so it's a, good, it's a good solution for that, and it's obviously available on this platform. And so they designed this board to interface to the controlling PC over uh, SAS, which is kind of cool. Um, obviously on here you have all of the Ethernet stuff, the SFPs, um, and another network port here. Um, so this board, you know, we're probably gonna have a hard time using this for anything because it's likely exceptionally custom firmware and software. Um, it, it's possible the firmware is loaded directly from the main system. So it's possible the firmware isn't even on here. Um, and of course it's designed for some very custom functionality, um, you know, line rate routing and packet filtering and that kind of stuff. So this board, probably not something we're going to reuse. I will hang it on the wall. It's a, it's a nice board design, certainly. Um, but this guy here, I do think we probably should be able to get this up and running. So I'm going to put together a little chassis for it with a fan to keep it cool. And uh, I'll see if I can get Linux up and running on it. I expect I should be able to do that. Um, and we'll do a little testing and see how the performance is. Um, but it's definitely a, a neat little board. So that's a kind of a good peek into one of the older Palo Altos. I have another... Palo here I'm going to pull apart that's a bigger one, a slightly newer one, um, which I suspect is going to be even more all custom stuff. But it'll be fun to play with. Uh, and so yeah, that's it for now. So I'll let you know if I get this up and running in a better form. Thanks. See you guys later.